Refurbishing a model traction engine, part 5. Unblocking a pipe, cleaning and running the engine on compressed air. This is the water gauge blowdown pipe and it's blocked. I got some of this to try from a local gun shop. It's called Brass Cartridge Case Cleaner. I know that because it says it on the bottle. And the first couple of lines of the instructions on the other side are enough to make me be very careful with it. The acid that I use in my acid bath is really kettle descaler and it's formic acid based. I think this stuff may be a bit stronger. I wanted to kill two birds with one stone because we have a pan that got burnt a while back. My daughter's partner Dan is to cooking what King Herod was to child welfare. So I thought to myself, if I put the pipe in the pan with some water, add the acid to the water, never the water to the acid, and boil it up like this, then not only will the acid remove the blockage, clean the pipe, it will also clean the pan. And now as the water comes to the boil, you can see that the black parts of the pan are bubbling quite well. I left the piece of pipe in the pan for about an hour, bubbling away. And this clip shows me using a pin to unblock the hole in the water gauge, which was also a bit gummed up with all manner of things. And I also took the opportunity to clean the metalwork on the engine itself. Using my bandsaw, I cut a long slit in a piece of mahogany. This holds the sandpaper and makes it very easy to use. And this is the method I used to remove the rust on all the steel parts, followed by some Scotch-Brite. By the way, the acid didn't work. The main problem is that in this boiler is some oil. And I don't really know how it got there, possibly by running it on compressed air with some oil in the pipeline. So to clear the pipe in the end, I straightened it out, heated it to dull red heat, poked a piece of wire through it to clear the blockage, and then rebent it to the shape and refitted it. Now it's time to give all of the moving parts of the engine a touch of oil. And the oil mixture that I'm using for lubrication is my normal mixture of 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil, and 25% rapeseed oil or canola oil. I'm being very careful not to miss any of the parts, including the big end, which is very important, and it's under a cover, so believe it or not, it's easy to miss that. With the compressed air connected, I opened the regulator slightly and moved the flywheel into the correct position. This engine always was very sensitive on the regulator, it's a bit all or nothing because the regulator is quite stiff. By being very gentle but firm at the same time with the regulator though, you can get it to run perfectly. This is a very steady speed but I'm going to open the regulator to make it go a bit faster. You will notice that just like the full size, the engine rocks back and forth, but it's not rocking back and forth much on its wheels because the entire table is moving. So far so good, now for warp speed. And now I've got water all over the table, because what happens is, the water pump pumps so much water back into the tank, as the bypass valve is open, the water is being circulated from the tank, through the pump and back to the tank. But at that high speed that you've just seen, it splashes about and the top of the tank is open, so some water comes out and goes on the table. I'm talking quite a lot in this video to explain the operations of the traction engine, but in the next episode I'm going to just leave the engine running without any narration. This traction engine really runs well, don't forget it's just a single cylinder engine, it's incredibly smooth. The lever that I'm moving at the moment is for the blower, and that works okay. The whistle sounds a bit feeble because there isn't much pressure in the boiler, about 40 psi I think. When I back off the regulator to slow the engine down, the whistle sounds a lot better. I'm just checking the hose connection because I'm going to pump up the pressure to 80 pounds per square inch.
The power in this small engine is remarkable for its size. When I first got this engine a few years ago, I rebuilt the top end completely and the valve timing is almost perfect. The whistle sounds a bit better now that the engine has 80 pounds per square inch in the boiler. I tested the safety valve and that blows off at just over 80 pounds per square inch. This clip shows the engine running from a different angle and you can clearly see the crankshaft driven water pump. The water pump rod has a long black rod connected to it which drives the lubricator and it drives the lubricator a bit too well because it radically over oils. To fix this I fitted a bypass valve in the lubricator line so I can adjust the flow. And as you can see once again when I run the engine at that speed, the water returning at high pressure to the belly tank makes it overflow. In this clip I've lifted up the back of the engine so you can see it running now with the wheels going round. At the moment the engine is running in the lowest gear. And now I'm going to move the gear lever into second gear. I was going to stop the flywheel but it didn't work out that way, hence the noise. But it's not doing any damage, there's not enough power to damage the gears at this speed. This is a very well made engine, I really was impressed with it when I got it, it was a bit of a mess. But I sorted that out, I've had it completely from together, wheels off and everything. But unfortunately at that time I didn't make videos. Not only does this engine have a proper working differential on the back axle, as you can see by the way I'm stopping the wheels, the engine runs just as well in reverse as it does in forward gear. But the regulator doesn't like the dynamo being in reverse, so it turns the lights out. It doesn't damage anything, the LEDs just don't light up in reverse. I'll put it back in low gear. And don't forget, I am aware that you're not supposed to do this, but for the purposes of the video, I thought it would make it make that lovely sound that we all know and love. This engine has a crane attachment that fits at the back. And the wheel at this side has a winding drum behind it. All you have to do is remove the drive pin on the wheel and you can use the winding drum with a piece of steel cable as a winch to operate the crane attachment. And I'm pretty sure that that's where Fred Dibner got his idea from when he removed the wheel from his Land Rover and fitted a winch drum to the back axle. A few years ago, a friend of mine was writing an article for a magazine called Land Rover World all about Fred's Land Rover. And when my friend was going over to see Fred, he asked me if I wanted to tag along. I spent a couple of afternoons with this remarkable man and believe me, Fred Dibner was a special person. And sadly, Fred was taken from us far too early. And that's about it for this video, apart from this last shot, running in slow motion in the dark. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.